interesting news. Uh, here it is. I am out at MSNBC. Now, whose decision was this? Well, it was both of our decisions. I will explain, okay? In turn, not at the same time. So uh, when I first came into MSNBC, they told me, hey, listen, you know, basically the main thing you gotta do is get good ratings. I was like, okay, that's pretty clear. Uh, and uh, by the time that I had left, I had very good ratings, as I'm about to show you in a little bit. But uh, I was called in a couple of weeks ago and told that I will not get the six o'clock shot. I was like, whoa, that's interesting. I said, okay, well, why, right? Well, they said, uh, you had really good ratings, you did everything that we asked you to do, but we went in a different direction. But we want you to stay, which is nice of them. And they said, we want you to have a different role, and uh, they offered, honestly, a lot of money for that different role. I said no. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you why I said no, and why I think they didn't wanna go for six o'clock. So here's the interesting story. After I was told that, hey, listen, you mainly it's the ratings, right? One of the producers at, on one of the shows pulled me aside as a friend and gave me a little talking to, which was interesting. He said, look, Cenk, there are two audiences, right? He said, there's the audience that you're trying to appeal to, that's the viewers, and there's the audience that is management, okay? And management is kind of like the club. And they want to make sure that you're cool and that, you know, basically you can play ball to be in the club. And I thought, hey, listen, the guy's trying to look out for me. I appreciate it. Is that really true? Who knows, right? Hey, it's something to note, no question about it, right? But we'll see how it develops. Okay. Then I started getting notes every once in a while, and these notes were no big deal, perfectly fine. You know, they would tell you, uh, don't use your arms so much. Look at that, I'm just using the arms, right? <laughs> okay, why, who knows? Uh, act more like a senator. Why, why would I act like a senator? Senators are incredibly boring. Why would I do that? But okay, I'm trying, you know, hey, it's a different format, right? On the online, I get to do, it's my show, I do whatever I like, we have a great audience, et cetera, but it's a different format, and they're, in that uh, respect, my bosses, so I listen to them, right? And then we get a number of enormous news events, and for those of you uh, who don't know, those big news events wind up helping CNN. So when Egypt Revolution happens, everybody turns to CNN, uh, Libya, Japan, uh, Osama bin Laden getting shot and killed, uh, all those are what they call CNN stories, right? And so, now the show is not named. Uh, we have all these four storms that we gotta get beyond. Uh, and then I'm doing this and this, okay, and I got the tie on. It's, but you know, so we had some up and down numbers in February and March, for example, right? Uh, and then I started doing it more my style. <laughs> and then the numbers went up. You're about to see that in a second. Okay, and I just love this comment on YouTube. I'm sorry, I forgot who said it. But they said, looking at Cenk on the Young Turks is like watching a tiger in the wild, right? Seeing him on uh, TV is like watching that same tiger in a zoo. <laughs> and I love you for saying that. It's a little true, especially when I was actually trying to listen to their advice. Now, I stopped listening to their advice in April. Why? Well, this is the TV moment or movie moment. I got pulled in. And they told me, hey, listen, uh, we were just, or it was actually one specific person, the head of MSNBC. He said, I was just in Washington, and people in Washington tell me that they're concerned about your tone. I was like, whoa, what? You know, despite all the things that I've said about the mainstream media, I still viewed that as kind of like theoretical. Like a real person, are they really gonna say that? I was like, and I, I'm naively thinking, what does he mean? Did he talk to his friend Bob in Washington? <laughs> Why would you say people in Washington if you meant, oh yeah, I was talking to my buddy down at the shop about you. It just happened to be that he was a person in Washington. You wouldn't frame it that way, right? But I'm still thinking that. And then he gives me the second part of the speech. Hey, listen, Jenk, outsiders are cool. And they wear, I think he might've said something like, they wear leather jackets, they ride bikes. I think I'm an outsider. I, don't ride a bike, but <laughs> I have a terrible leather jacket. Anyway, uh, he said, I'd love to be an outsider. Outsiders are cool, but we're not. We're insiders. We are the establishment. And I just kind of sat back. I was like, wow, this is it. This is the speech. So he, he said, look, you got to tone it down. And then he had me talk to one of their top contributors who explained, hey, listen, 
just take it easy, you know, you're a little tough on the guests, and, you know, tone issues, and let's have more Republicans on, which was an interesting thing. I, by, by the way, I have no problems with that, because I'm not going to have a Republican on and play patty cakes with them. Whenever I had Republicans on, I challenged them, and I enjoyed that. So no problems with that. So uh, I get that speech, and uh, when I walked out of the office, I didn't say anything to him uh, when I heard it. And when I walked out of the office, I thought, oh, that's it. Now it's on. <laughs> okay, I will not be doing that. I will be doing the opposite. So then I started uh, letting that tiger run a little bit, right? And we did it more my style. Whether it was stylistically, more, uh, some of the segments were more unscripted. At the end, they were totally unscripted, right? Which I enjoy, like we're doing right now. Um, because you get to tell a story that way. I'm going to come back to that point in a second. But substantively, you know, it was always uh, challenging the government and challenging those that are in power. And obviously, that was the issue, right? And I continue to do that. Uh, going forward as well. And so what happened? Well, my ratings improved dramatically. April was good. May was great. Let me show you the May numbers. Uh, these are all from internal MSNBC emails. Okay, uh, Adults 25 to 54, I got 164,000. That was a 19 share. Delivered the strongest adults 25 and total viewer audiences since the launch of the show. Okay. Now, you got to understand the demo talk here on television, right? Adults 25 to 54 is what they call the money demo. That's uh, where they want, uh, that's what the advertisers judge you on. That's where you got to do well. So April, check. May, even better. Great. Uh, well, how about the whole quarter? Because that gives you a better sense of it. So if you say, oh, well, he did well this week or he didn't do well that week, yeah, that's not really much of an indication. But a whole quarter, three months, April, May, and June. Well, fantastic. Look at those numbers. Adults 25 to 54, 154,000 overall, 18 share. Now that includes uh, April, and we picked up in May and June. Uh, but even then, overall, ranked number two in total viewers uh, overall in the quarter, beat CNN. And MSNBC Live at six, that's me, up from last year and last quarter. So why is it important that it's up from last year? Well, they were incredibly satisfied with Ed Schultz as they should have been. He did a great job, and he brought up the numbers. I did better than last year's numbers, okay? So if you beat the guy that they said, hey, was the guy who got the position before you, they should be very happy with that. And it's not to say that I beat it, it's just we improved on the numbers, so that's fantastic, right? And if you beat the hell out of CNN, that's fantastic. In June, it's even better. Okay, now look at this. Uh, this was the week right before they told me the decision, okay? Um, 174,000 uh, in the demo, 19 share, beat CNN by 51,000 in the demo. <laughs> now that's when they're saying, yeah, we're not that interested. How can you not be interested if you, care, if you only care about the numbers? That doesn't make any sense, right? If you think that's bad, you see uh, what we had up on that earlier graphic? I beat Fox in adults 18 to 34. Those are, uh, that's a younger audience, obviously. I don't know how many MSNBC shows beat Fox. In fact, when I went on MSNBC, I did an article with Alternet, and I said that I would beat Fox in the ratings and ma make them fear me. And I remember some conservative websites, oh, yeah, well, you, who's gonna, you can't beat Fox in the ratings. Fox is way ahead. That's why you, know, you see the number two numbers. That means you beat CNN and you beat everybody else, right? Well, I caught him in a demo. Right after I caught him in a demo and was number one there, they called me and said, no thanks. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously I was puzzled by that, right? So, and, but I do know that the speech I got it three months ago. So I asked. I said, hey, listen, did I not do everything you asked me to? And he said, yes, you did. I said, did I not get good ratings? He said, you did. I said, so what's up? Uh, we think that there's a better role for you. And it's not in 6 o'clock. <laughs> okay, I'm like, great. When do I start at 7 o'clock? <laughs> and that is not how it went down. So they offered me a, a smaller role, contributor, et cetera, et cetera. And again, to, you know, I, maybe to their credit, they offered me a lot of money. So why did I turn it down? Look, when they gave me the speech, I thought, look, they're trying to rail, uh, you know, they're trying to bring me in, and and, but they're not. I said maybe they are. Maybe they're going to act on it. But I don't care. I'm not going to do that. There's no way that I am going to control the content of the show and tone it down so that people in Washington are happy. Not going to do it. I promised you guys. You remember before I went into MSNBC, I promised the Young Turks audience that I would never do that, right? So, uh, you know, but at the time you think, are they really going to make a decision based on that? I don't know. We'll find out. Well, when your ratings are good and they say you did everything you were supposed to do 
and then you don't get the show, it leads me to believe that that might have been the reason. So I didn't want to work at a place that you know, wouldn't let me do my kind of show, that wasn't interested in my kind of show, didn't want to challenge power. In fact, isn't that what I've been railing against the whole time on the Young Turks? And look, part of the reason that I made the decision, and look, come on, keep it real, there's a lot of factors, right? You get all that money thrown at you. And let me tell you something else that's really important. It's the perks. And it's funny, because I said the same thing before I went in. God, they give you car rides to the airport, they give you fancy hotels. You know that it, when you fly business class, not only do you get warm chocolate chip cookies, but your bags come out first. And you're like, oh, suckers, all right, everybody wait. I'm going first, right? It's great to have your bags come out first. You get used to it, right? And that's how they suck you in. As a general principle, I don't mean MSNBC in particular. And so I thought and I thought and I said, look, the deciding factor for me was I had to tell you this story because I'm holding on to the story that you know I've been talking about the whole time on the Young Turks about how uh, the problem with the mainstream media is they're desperate to get access they don't challenge the government they don't challenge power and now you see that that is in fact true when they give you the speech you're not sure that it's true when they act upon the speech then you're sure it's true then I gotta tell you that if I take the money and I get a reduced role and I just you know do whatever I do with it and maybe I even rise up in the ranks again What's the point, man? The point of this show was truth-telling. That's what we're supposed to do. And we're supposed to challenge the government. That's the role of the media. So I stuck to that, and, uh, and I hope I made the right decision. And that is exactly what we'll do on the Young Turks going forward. And you could still tell them. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell Randy Gonzalez, I'm coming. More than ever, I'm coming.